I know many of you saw some of these dogs around here. Where is, is Yammer here? Yammer's going to be in the bosom. Oh, I'm oh, busy. Little... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah well, there Yammer, there Yammer, Yammer lost his lower jaw. Uh, he was at a, a puppy mill slash boarding operation that was in Mississippi, and our animal rescue team took him away, and now he's up for adoption. But he's an odd looking creature, and there are a few others. I feel a little bit like. Okay, so here's, hey, buddy. here's the amber, right? So his tongue. His, to his tongue is out, and I feel like I was telling my, my wife Lisa tonight, not that Lisa, but my, my wife, like, that it's a little bit of like a Star Wars convention of dogs here. <laughs> they're, they're all distinctive. You know, the, the, the notion of these purebreds is like, you know, they're standardized, but every one of these mutts that come with their own stories is so unique. Right. And we really celebrate their uniqueness and their differentiation. And let me give Yammer back to you. <laughs> but I want to thank you. You know, this, this book has been out a while now, and I, I joke with my wife. I actually went to 100 cities for my book tour. And the book is called The Bond. The subtitle is uh, Our, our uh, Kinship with animal, Animals, Our Call to Protect Them. And uh, this was like the longest book tour in history. So now with Juliana and Lisa hosting this, I think I've gotten into the Guinness Book of World Records. <laughs> but the, uh, there are a couple, of, a couple of theses to the book. One is that we have an instinctive connection with other animals. That animals have been central to the human experience for all of our human history and prehistory that we kind of were immersed in nature, animals were all around us, uh, up through the advent of agriculture and the domestication of animals, animals were a central feature of our lives. Now in our industrial age, and in our technological age, animals are in our homes, they are all around us, we are nature lovers, even the biggest cities uh, like Washington and New York, we have parks planted right in the middle that reflect our connection to nature and to other creatures. And we have all of these manifestations of love and appreciation for animals and nature in our society. Yet, and this is the second thesis of the book, is if one thesis is we're connected to other creatures, the second is that our relationship with animals is fraught with contradictions. We talk about how much we love other creatures, yet we do a lot of pretty terrible things to them. And as Lisa Spees said, you know, a lot of people associate animal protection work with adoption of homeless animals, and that is a central mission of humane organizations. But we take a very expansive view of these issues, and we work on puppy mills, and we work on the trade in wildlife, whether it's elephant ivory or rhino horn. We try to stop the slaughter of horses for human consumption. We combat dog fighting and cock fighting and other stage forms of fights between animals. We combat factory farming. One of the greatest uses of animals is the industrial production of animals on farms, where in the last 50 years we've seen this incredible transformation in agriculture, where animals used to be outside, they used to have access to pasture, they could feel sunlight on their backs and soil beneath their feet, and over these last 50 years we've moved them into big warehouses, and within some of those warehouses, we've confined them in cages and crates barely larger than their bodies. So what we're trying to do with the Humane Society of the United States is not to say that animals are equal to people, but in one capacity, <clears throat> they are our equals, and that's their capacity to suffer. Yeah. They think, and they feel, and they suffer. Mm -hmm. And if we humans are so intelligent, and we certainly are, we're creative and We've got to create ingenuity. Can't we figure out a way to live our lives and also to allow the animals to have decent lives as well? Mm -hmm. So we don't really accept this polarized notion that you know it's humans against animals. We can figure out a way to have a robust economy and also to be good to animals and not to have cosmetic testing on animals, not to have factory farming, not to have horse slaughter, not to have puppy mills, mm -hmm. not to have killing of seals for their fur or whales for really no good purpose at all. And I really think our society is waking up on these issues. Just this year, South Dakota became the 50th state 
to adopt felony level penalties for animal cruelty. So the notion that we abhor cruelty, it's not just a moral problem, but a legal problem, is now enshrined in the law in all 50 states. In the last two years, we've got 60 major food retailers, from Costco to Safeway to McDonald's to Burger King, to agree to stop purchasing pork from operations that can find the pigs in tiny crates that don't allow them to turn around. Now just three nations in the world, out of 200 nations or so in the world, are engaged in commercial whaling. And I could give you other metrics of how our society is advancing on these issues. And the book is really kind of a big picture look at how we're faring in our relationship with animals. And in whatever way, we'd invite you to get involved. And obviously, if you're going to have an animal in your life, a dog or a cat, we'd want you to think about adoption because there are still 2.7 million healthy dogs and cats euthanized in 3,500 shelters in the United States every year. And we want you to stay away from buying them from a pet store. There are pet stores like Petco and PetSmart that only now offer homeless animals through adoption, through partnerships with groups like Lost Dog and Cat Rescue, which is the group that is making these dogs tonight available for adoption. And the Humane Society. And the Washington Humane Society, yes. And we've got great partners here in, in Washington, D.C., not just Lost Dog and Cat Rescue, but Washington Humane Society and the Washington Animal Rescue League. But also want to ask you to think about the other ways in which our lives intersect with animals. Thinking about conscious food choices, thinking about buying products not tested on animals, and raising your voice in whatever way you feel comfortable to build laws and awareness, consciousness on this broad set of issues. So we'd love to get you involved. And Juliana, I'm so grateful to you for hosting. Thank you very, very much. Let's give you a